My name is Gerald Marcus, and the name of our law firm is the Law Offices of Gerald Marcus. Well, I've been practicing law for 30 years now, and my firm is dedicated to representing innocent injured victims, and that's what I've always done since I opened my practice in 1987. And basically what I tell all my clients is that my job in representing you is to pursue your case and to prosecute your claim aggressively and zealously within the boundaries of the law so that we can maximize your recovery. And uh, my client was severely injured while he was at a private school on private property. Uh, he was riding a skateboard down a ramp and he entered onto or into an access road, a private access road. And he was struck by a car and his arm went through the windshield of the car and it was 90% severed. Unfortunately, he had 90% loss of use of his arm. Uh, it was really about whether the condition on this private property was dangerous where the accident occurred. And we saw that at the bottom of the ramp, there was a trash bin enclosure. That person in our client, his view was completely obstructed of cars that were traveling from the parking lot coming down that access road. And of course, the defendants and their insurance company denied the claim and something like 38 times in writing saying that it was our client's fault, but we never gave up on it. In this case, the defense position, their contentions, were that an accident like this had never happened there before. And simply because it hadn't happened, it must not have been dangerous. The school didn't have a duty to warn or to make it safe because it was open and obvious. That was a big part of their defense. We started out by propounding a ton of written discovery and forced them to answer questions about the development of this project, which included building another dormitory and adding another structure, being the trash bin enclosure and how they really took, they spent millions and millions and millions of dollars to do this, but they didn't spend one nickel on any type of impact survey study to make it safe, that they really knew that it was dangerous, but they would of course never admit it was dangerous. So it kind of took what it took in that sparring, almost like a boxing match of round by round to feel them out and after three or four or five rounds to maybe gain some ground and win some rounds and maybe they hit us a couple of times. But as the case progressed, we realized that in order to really demonstrate what happened and how it looked to the motorist and to our client on a skateboard was to bring in motion lit. I think we gave them hundreds and hundreds of photographs, some videos and a bunch of discovery and um, they put it all together in a succinct fashion to demonstrate by animating in the day in the life generally with no vehicles and no people involved. It was um, really super professionally done. This was not done with stick figures. They put together uh, an animation with a vehicle that was an exemplar of the car that was involved. They had the dimensions of the actual trash bin enclosure down to a T, the dimensions of this access road, um, the degree of, of downgrade or slope and slant on the ramp down to the T so that it could ultimately be used at trial and admitted as evidence because it was all supported by our accident reconstructionist. Um, we talked probably a dozen times after the first rough draft, if you will, uh, to tweak it and make it more perfect. And they continued to work with me. It was very easy under a fairly tight deadline to show truly that it was a blind intersection and neither of them had a chance. So Motion Lit flew their crew out to New Hampshire and they spent, I think, 12 or 14 hours with our client. They did a day in the life video, but we knew that to show how his life was would be particularly impacting whether this case went to a jury or if it was just at a mediation to show the mediator, the defense attorneys and their insurance adjusters getting the other side to see what really happened, not just think about it. They were glued to that monitor and they went from a very, very small offer to about $4.35 million to settle the case 
The reason why I use Motion Lit is they're fully integrated. They're kind of a one-stop shop, lit plaintiff litigation support technical firm. So they not only can do these videos, but they can also uh, facilitate uh, IT and, and trial support during the trial, which is an absolute necessity for a trial lawyer in this day and age. You have to be high tech. Um, you have to appeal to that jury so that they see things quickly and efficiently. And they're just hands on. They're in tune with what we do as plaintiff trial lawyers and they make it easy for you. If you can use motion lit and have these day in the life videos with accident animation and reconstruction fairly early on, it demonstrates that you're taking your case seriously and you believe in your case and you're invested in your case. That increases the value of the case. To me, that's the most efficient way to utilize and put together the evidence and show that to someone and tell the story. And you can't do that all alone. You have to put together the right team in order to win these cases. And when it comes to having motion led on our team to put together the visuals, the technical support, the trial support, the accident reconstruction animation in the day in the life, um, I wouldn't use anybody else. It works.